Well, let's bring in Doug Campbell, CEO of Solid Power, joining us from the company's facilities in Louisville, Colorado, my old stomping grounds. Uh, Doug, let's talk about this expansion. How important is this for Solid Power as you work towards development of solid state EV batteries? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on your program. Uh, this development uh, is quite quite simple. It basically supports us executing on our roadmap to getting our batteries into uh, into commercial vehicles. You know, and we've talked about it, and everybody is well aware, solid state batteries hold great promise, but there are a lot of hurdles that need to be overcome, not just by you, but by others who are working on this. How confident are you that we are going to see solid state batteries, which allow, have greater power, quicker charging, it allows for quicker charging, how confident are you that we'll see those in electric vehicles, let's say by 2024, 2025? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're quite confident. Um, and, and the reason, the justification really for our confidence is that, yes, we're developing solid state batteries uh, that ha have all the um, performance potential that you just mentioned. Um, but what makes solid power so unique is that we are producing our batteries in a manner that is virtually identical to the production of lithium ion batteries such that we can step right into uh, existing or contemplated gigafactories and switch those over from lithium ion to solid state. Doug, we had the folks at Cairn Energy Research, which is just down the road in Boulder, uh, crunch some numbers yep. in terms of investments in electric vehicle batteries and battery productions. And it's going to be a huge ramp up over the next couple of years. But I have to be honest with you, when I talk with people in the industry, they all say the same thing. This is nice. This is a great start. We're going to need a lot more. How much more do you think is going to be needed? In terms of battery production capacity? Correct. Correct. Well, gosh, I mean, well, first of all, <laughs> the answer to that is a, a bit above my pay grade because that, that's really for the auto OEMs. The nice thing, you know, the nice thing, the nice position that I'm in is that I talk with uh, not all of the world's auto OEMs, but a pretty large collection of them. And I get to see those roadmaps and those roadmaps are real. Every one of them has a hockey stick as it pertains to the adoption of electric vehicles, when they're going to shift their sales from gas combustion to electric. Certainly, it varies as to the inflection point of that hockey curve in terms of time, but it's real and it's there and they're all doing it. A couple last questions here, Doug. The first one being the Biden administration wants to invest heavily in EV charging stations. But everybody I've talked with says that's nice, but we need fast charging. Do we, are, are, when you look at fast charging out there, are you worried that we don't have enough of it coming quick enough? Uh, I'm not, I'm not. And honestly, I think, uh, I think fast charging is a little bit of a red herring because frankly speaking, um, I think we, 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 play, we, we, we place an over-reliance on the need for fast charging, not to say that you don't want it, um, but it's not something that I think average consumers are gonna use on a daily basis. Rather, I think the emphasis needs to be more on increasing vehicle range, um, such that uh, fast charging becomes, by and large, a non-issue unless you're doing very long road trips. Uh, still on schedule for the uh, SPAC IPO a little bit later on this year? We are indeed. Uh, at this point, the ball is in the SEC's court, and so we're, we're operating at, uh, to their timeline. Um, but based on what we're seeing, we anticipate sometime uh, later this year, definitely before the end of the year.